the power of the Institute is that we have powerful partners. Uh, Strive Together, and Opportunity Accelerator, and uh, the purpose-built communities, uh, uh, our Place Matters team. I mean, we are a part of a collective, and all of us are here uh, to support uh, and to serve uh, you all. Uh, so uh, I am uh, thrilled. I want to I wanna do two things. I want to show you one of the biggest fundraising fails I've ever had, right? Oh, it does happen. Uh, and, and I want to talk to you uh, about uh, this moment we're in and the ability to uh, sort of rise to the occasion uh, with courage and determination uh, and fortitude that it's going to take to meet this moment. You know, gathering of leaders was done intentionally. That was not an accident. Uh, and we wanted to have some time to laugh and joke and heal, but all right, I'm getting to the serious stuff now uh, because uh, it's been clear why we're needed. I mean, we've, we've made the case. Uh, and here's what I want you to think about because this is, this is the only way I can reconcile uh, the moments I'm in, the courage it takes, uh, and uh, my own stamina and how much I'm really giving to this field. So first I want to say, None of us get here by ourselves. It was a statement, I don't know who said that, that uh, anyone who claims you got here on your own, it's just not true. And for some reason, uh, all of my mentors in this work have been powerful women. Uh, first was, I mean, this, this, is, this is just, just being honest, it's true. It's not, I'm not trying to make another point. Uh, but uh, Marion Wright Edelman, uh, the Children's Defense Fund, on the Haley Farm is where we created the concept of the Harlem Children's Zone uh, as part of her leadership vision in the Black Community Crusade for Children. And folks who knew my relationship, any Marion was my leader. Uh, she just plucked me out of a crowd of folk and said, uh, I'm going to help make sure this country uh, understands you've got something to give. I, why? I don't know. She could have chosen lots of folks, but that's what she did. Another one of my leaders mentioned today, Angela Blackwell. Smartest person I know and has taught me so much. I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago, 25 years ago, she began to get me focused on data and place, urban strategies. You all don't know the history of this whole place-based movement and how she began to nail this idea that place matters and data is key. These organizations weren't invented then and I sat at her feet and understood how important this moment was going to be. Uh, you heard me talk about fundraising. Nancy Rube. Nancy would be embarrassed. I'm glad she's not here because uh, she would be. But Nancy actually was the first person that told me, you, the numbers you're talking about, you're not going to be able to accomplish anything with those kind of numbers. Uh, you've got to be able to think about this in a way of resources that meets the moment. Uh, and so I just, I just want to say that all of us have mentors that we know I knew some folks who were fierce, determined, uh, and exceptional. So with that as a backdrop, uh, I always try to measure this moment against uh, my heroes. How would my heroes act in a moment like this? Uh, and the person that I, 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 I will never reach her status, right? I don't even know if I aspire to reach her status. But in my mind, I'd like to think I have a shot. It's Harriet Tubman. You all know about Harriet? I mean, this sister, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, do you really, I mean, have you really thought about what courage means? 
I mean, so I'm, I'm, I've been fascinating, fascinated with this woman. And in my, in my head, she's like my imaginary friend. Like, if I was around back in the day, right, I kind of feel like I would try and be with her like I was with Marion, Harriet, what we doing today? How we doing, right? We're up here. We're free now, right? <laughs> What do you think we ought to do? And I just imagine Harriet saying to me, Jeff, I got this idea. I got this idea. I've been moved by God. I, I want you to go with me. I say, Harriet, what's the idea? Let's go back down south. <laughs> Grab some slaves and bring them back. Now, you know me. You know what I've been saying? Harriet, like, can't we write an op-ed, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's a speech we could give somewhere to help and encourage this thing, right? And she would be like, no, 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 I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'd be like, well, Harry, I think, you know, I think emancipation's probably gonna come, we don't. And then I try and explain to her, do you understand the risk you're taking? If they catch you, they're not gonna just kill you. They're gonna make an example of you so every black person knows, don't you ever try to do this. She knew the risk. She went. Now, I'd like to think that after, you know, Harriet, my good friend, she talked me into it. You know, I go underground, railroad, we go, we get some fellow folks, we bring them back. When Harriet came to say, Jeff, I want to do it again, I'd be like, Harriet, no, no, no. All right? <laughs> we did our thing. We made the point. There's no reason. 13 times, 13 times, with all of them folks looking for her. You know, she was, a, she was an active spy. She was an active soldier, for real. I mean, what, what was it about this moment? I mean, the war was going on. She didn't have to go out and then join in. She could have waited this moment out, waited for things to get better, what was it about her belief in justice and freedom and a position that said, I'm not waiting for anything? I often think, imagine working with Harry and asking if you could leave at five. <laughs> Harry, I'm really tired. <laughs> I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I think I, want, I need the weekend off, Harry. Come on. <laughs> Can't we hold this thing off? I mean, you know I'm kidding, but you know I'm not kidding. These moments of history are not made for everyone. A lot of folks sat on the sidelines. A lot of people did. And you can't, and they looked. You can't blame them. I can't accuse them of anything. Some leaders, when the moment is called to act, some leaders act. Some leaders don't. And that's how this thing has been historically, and this is a moment for us. Look, the scientists had their moments. They got the vaccines, they got the boost. The medical field, they had their moments. The nurses, we were cheering and clapping for them. Guess whose moment it is right now? It's our moment. And the question is, are we going to rise up to meet that moment? And are we preparing for real? I mean, for real preparing to do what's necessary with the same fierce determination. I mean, we're talking about, I, I like it. We're talking about a billion dollars. Yes. We're talking about cities and then turn it into regions and state. Yes. This is, this is the kind of big thinking this moment calls for right now. If we're really going to have a chance to save our families and our children, which is what we're called on to do in this moment. And you know, I'm fond of saying, there ain't, there ain't no Superman. Ain't nobody coming to rescue our kids, our families. Uh, it is us. And uh, everybody, every, in this room, everybody's rooting for you. When you go outside this room, everybody is not rooting for you. And you've got to be prepared. I, I like to collaborate. I will collaborate. And I like to, you know, not do the tough thing. I don't want to be argumentative. But some things I will fight for. 
And if we're going to do this work, we're going to have to be prepared uh, to fight. And I don't consider, you know, politics a funny business. Uh, anyone who's going to support the uh, efforts that we're trying to do, I'm going to be friends with. And if you're not supporting this kind of work, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to be your friend. Uh, and that doesn't come with a D or an R. None of it means anything to me. In the end, if you're helping support this work, I'm all in. And if I think I can get you to help support this work, I'm all in. And don't be surprised if you see me in some back room someday coming out. You say, whose office? Did I just see Jeff coming? That Mitch McConnell's office he was coming out? What, what, what's he doing all up in there? Don't be surprised. Because if I get a moment for the cause, right? Do you think Harriet would have let that stop her? If I get a moment for the cause, I'm going to do what's necessary to drive the resources and expertise in this field. Uh, so uh, I want to I want to do two other things. They're going to be quicker. The first I have to tell you about my monumental fundraising fail. Now I've had some great fundraising successes, uh, but Tuesday now we're coming up here Wednesday. Tuesday I have to go to a board meeting of a foundation, not my foundation, not a board I'm on. They're not even going to give us any money, but. I had made a commitment I was going to go in and talk to the board, and they decided to do a dinner. Now, Cecilia knows my bedtime is early, <laughs> right? And I got to get up and catch a plane the next day. I don't want to do a dinner Tuesday night before having to come up here and work and try and, you know, uh, make sure this goes on. But, I, you know, I've I mentioned to you, I believe, I believe in God. I do. And the reason, there's a very simple reason, because there's no way you can draw a line from where I grew up in the South Bronx to where I am today. It's just not possible. And I'm just saying, logically, it wouldn't happen. And George and I talk about the money. We talk about this issue. So I've learned to be obedient, but I'm hard-headed. Right? So things happen. I'm like, well, why did that happen? I don't know why that happened. Right? So the meeting is in the worst place for a meeting. It's on Wall Street, which is way downtown. Now, I live on Long Island. It's one thing to come up in Harlem, but now I got to go all the way downtown to Wall Street. And the meeting's supposed to be in at 8.30. Tiffany told them, get Jeff out of there by 9.00. It's a quarter to nine, meeting's still going on. I'm just like, oh, but I'm, you know, I'm doing my job. I'm social. So in the meeting, uh, the maitre d' comes in, and he walks in. We're in a private room. He walks in, and he says, how's everybody doing? Is everybody doing? Is having a great time? And he said, yeah, we're having a, anything you need. Please come to me. And I'm just thinking, wow, look at that. Look at that brother. That guy's in charge of this whole thing. That's deep. So we go on, and we talk. Five minutes later, he comes back. He says, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I know y'all are in a meeting, but... I didn't really believe that was Jeff Canada there. And he saved me. And he said, you don't understand. I went to the Employment Technology Center. And uh, y'all don't know who y'all are talking to right here. That, but let me tell you what happened right before that moment. The head of the foundation said to me, Jeff, how, do you think this is really working? How do you know that you really reach scale, right? Oh, this is an honest to God story. How do you know that you really, and I have my regular rap. Yeah, well, you know, I got 900 kids in college. I got 1,000 kids. I'm going through my normal rap. And right then, God, <laughs> right? This is deep. I'm just, can y'all put that picture up? This is deep. God, this is the picture from Tuesday. George, 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 George knows, because George is my chief operating officer. He knows what employment technology said. And this is what happened. The brother got there, and right before we took this picture, his brother started crying. This guy's like, what, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, fully grown man. The moment was overwhelming for him and for me. Who knows what are the odds of this ever happening 
So now I'm sitting there saying, but God, why did this even happen? This is a great fund. I could have raised $20 million off of this moment. These people ain't going to give me a dollar, right? This is totally irrelevant to them. So why, why couldn't you have done this when the big folks is in the house and give me an opportunity like that? I'd have, been, I'd have just said, write the check right now. This is it, right? And, and, and that's how you can take that down. And, and this is... This is so then I'm, I'm serious. I'm thinking, this is Tuesday before I'm coming up here. I didn't want to do this whole thing. Why did this happen? You know why it happened? It happened because I wanted to remind everybody, you will never see the impact of the work that you were doing when you reach scale. You can't see. It is happening in too many places. You might be sitting right next to the life you saved and not even know it's there because who would know? I would have gone to that restaurant. Who would have even known that happened? I, this, is, this is about the generations, right? Do you see? remember those four young people we saw? Do you think any of them are not going to have successful lives and their families are going to be said, this is generational. No one's going to talk about the generations. They're talking about what happened right now. We are trying to change the generations of our people so that they have a real shot at the American dream. And, and the fact that you get to be my age, maybe you, that's not a young guy, maybe you see, most of it we won't see. Most of it, we're going to walk on faith. We're going to know in the end, we are changing the life trajectory of thousands and thousands of our young people and our families, and it will stay with them forever. And no one's going to pat us on the back. No one's going to come. You're going to have a moment like that's probably why God didn't give me no money. He was like, this ain't about money, right? This is about you knowing that this impact is real and it matters and it's generational. And most of it you will never see. That's the reason we are here. That's the reason we're doing this work. Now, I, I'm going to close because this is another, it's another one of those things. So, you know, I, I, I was drafting you all into the Army, right? Uh, and so, uh, usually I close my talks and uh, I sometimes uh, will uh, recite a poem. But Alfonso came in. Reverend White, to you all. Alfonso came in. He said, yeah, but it's an army of love. Well, that's my poem uh, that I want to close with, uh, that I wrote. I, I had no idea. Alfonso hadn't heard this poem. I had no idea he was going to use that term. Uh, but it just said to me that that's who we are. We are that army of love. Uh, and I said to Jeff Edmondson, uh, I think it was Winston Churchill, who says one of my favorite sayings, I said, this is not the end of our gathering. It's not even the beginning of the end. But this is the end of the beginning. We are now poised to do something in this country uh, that's going to revolutionize uh, what's happening in America. Uh, so, so let me just close with this poem, which obviously was uh, set up uh, by uh, Reverend Wyatt. It's called A Small Army of Love. Heard the news yesterday, and today mothers cried. Our children by tens of thousands have died, and for what? What will stop this madness, the eternal sadness? of small little caskets filled with dreams never had. Are we mad? We need a small army of love and no thanks. We don't need any rifles, no guns, and no tanks. Just love and help from above. Our army will be small, diverse, and unique. Little soldiers with braids and some with sneakered feet all marching for peace and an end to the war that has claimed little soldiers when they open their doors and romp in the playground. Can we stand anymore? We need a small army of love start today. 
Centuries on God keeping danger away. While our young go to school and play on our streets, a small army of us standing guard while they sleep can't be done. And the love of our army will always sustain us when others disdain us with laugh, ridicule. Our love keeps us fighting. Yes, we're fighting fools. So I know what's been whispered and what some said aloud. Those fools with their pipe dreams, their heads in the clouds. But when you love all the children, there's nothing to do but start a small army of love, me and you. Thank you very much, and God bless you.